Hey YouTube, I'm trying to put the finishing touches on the biggest part of this. Uh, it's going to be six inches off the floor. It's going to have 28 inches. For the 20 inch 55 to fit into, um, we have to make all this square. Don't want to get the rack done and suddenly have uh, nothing square because if we do, we won't. Uh, it won't hold the tank if it's not square. Now, uh, I've seen a lot of different um, varieties of how, how many screws to put at what screw points. I, I would suggest to you that you look at geometry. And geometry will tell you that one of the sturdiest geometric designs is a triangle. So I'm putting my screws in on a triangle. That means that there are three screws. With the top of the triangle at the top of the formation. As you're looking at this rack now, it is set at, this is the bottom, that's the top, and so my triangle will be one at the top and two at the bottom, and I would, uh, I would have you look up. I mean, a square is, is fine for, for <laughs> screws. But even a square will rack if weight is kicked from side to side on it. And so I would suggest to you that maybe you think about using three screws in a triangle shape. Let's make sure we haven't gotten off too far. Ooh, we have gotten off too far. One nice thing about stainless steel screws, they will come right back out. I'm going to keep this uh, functional here. So I want my edge square with the outside, and I want to make sure that this is a level plane. I don't want this to be off level in some way, which will cause the So it's always good to check. Measure twice, cut once. And again, you don't hear any cracking. You don't hear any splitting of wood. And we check our plane and we're really close. It's off just a little bit. But sometimes you can fix a slight rack by pulling, pulling or pushing away from yourself. And a little bit of, uh, of uh, construction knowledge is to measure from this corner to that corner, outside corner to outside corner, and then measure outside corner to outside corner. And the two should be the same. 
and that will help you with getting an object like this that has so many different components to it into a square thing. You can move it one way or the other and it will change the measurement that you end up with. So sometimes it's handy. Like in this case, we've got... This is when my large rack, my large sawhorses are an effort. So here I am at 79 and 3 quarters. And if I go over to this corner, get on it. I'm at 80 and a quarter, which means that I need to go this way to rack the object back into the right. Okay, I'm at 79 and 3 quarters there. So I'm going to go back over here if I can get my tape to stay straight. And see if I'm still at 79 and 3 quarters. And I am at 79 and 3 quarters. And going from this corner to that corner. And again, I'm just rechecking my measurements. And I am at ooh, 79 and 7 eighths this way. Alright, but that's just a trick that you can use to um, get an object back into the proper square. And we are getting close here. Once this is uh, completed, this part of the build is completed, then I am going to only need to put, once again, a triangle, start at the top and the center. I'm only going to need to put my under braces. I will brace this underneath here between each shell so that it transfers the weight all the way to the floor. There will also be a block going here to transfer the weight directly to the floor. And uh, there will also be another block another uh, three-quarter inch block running up the inside to also help add secondary bracing. And it's mainly to keep, it, keep the rack true when it's being carried around. And so here we go with our second set of screws. Make sure everything is stayed where it is supposed to be. And you will kind of feel whether it is in the proper alignment or not. If it starts fighting you a lot, you'll know that it's probably not in the proper alignment. Or you've got something racked or uh, the board is really warped. Those kinds of things will fight you when you're trying to get something in the proper alignment. And this is working out just fine up here. Good deal. And 
I'm just showing you this so that you can see how my application is going to function. Now, my measurement between the top shelf, which I'm down here at now, This will be the shelf where my 20, 20 high and my 5 gallon and I think another 10 gallon will sit. So it will have the least amount of weight on it at the top. And this is the space here between these two. But you've got to also add a piece of 5 eighths plywood that will rest on top of this. Uh, this will be the... the the, the shelving that the 55 gallon will sit on and uh, it's going to uh, have 27 and a half inches and the tank is 20, 20 inches tall so I'll have 7 inches of clearance space here to work on this tank and uh, that's not as much as I wanted I probably should have gone 3 inches off the floor and given myself another three inches between here and here and that would have given me I wanted 10 to 12 inches but I decided that six inches off the floor was probably the best bet for airflow through and everything else so now let's see I've got the holes drilled and I need the screws in it now I've gotten this to a point, or when I flip it over and put the front, front legs on it, that I will literally have my rack built. Except for my inner bracing for the transferring the weight, secondarily transferring the weight to the floor. So there's one side completed, and now I'll flip this over, add the pieces on the legs on the front, and then I'll start putting my blocking in, and uh, once I get my blocking in, then I'll cut up this sheet of plywood to make the shelves, and um, then I'll start painting it. I've got to seal this against water. And I'm probably just going to use some kind of clear or yellow seal. I was going to use Quick 15, but I don't have quite enough left. So I'll probably get some kind of spar varnish and give this a, a quick double coat just so that it will shed water and humidity and moisture won't bother the build. And I'll do it all. Now, eventually, in here, between these braces, I'm going to put that insulation and eventually this will be insulated and will have um, and it probably going to end up just being for this 55 area it will have the uh, floor flooring that I was talking about using and I will put it into place and stack it up on on the inside of the insulation and I may do both sides as well but I'm not sure now I don't know exactly how much I've got left I've got a little over a box left 
and I'm not sure how that's going to work out as far as uh, trying to get all the both sides. And I'm actually beginning to wonder if sealing both sides is actually such a good idea because it will permanently trap any kind of moisture in there as well. And if it gets too hot, I'm going to have trouble getting air to flow through there. So I may seal th two sides and leave two sides completely open. It'll also be better for me to be able to get to the tank if one side is open where I can get at it. And of course, I'll leave the side open that's towards the uh, inside of the room. And the two sides that will be sealed will be both be corner walls so that it will protect it in the winter time. It gets cold here in southern Indiana in the winter time. And the wall it's going against is the north wall, and it's not heavily insulated. And I will be putting a heater in this tank, but I don't want to heat it very much because the fish are probably going to be used to 70, 75 degree water, and I don't really want my temperature getting much over 80. So I need the flow through. I need to be very careful with my heater, but I also need to be careful in the winter that the temperature doesn't fall so low that it causes these fish some issues. Now the shrimp that are going to be up on top, they're, they're probably not going to mind it getting too, you know, a little cold. I have a heater in that tank, but it's one of those little heaters, and it just barely keeps the tank above, you know, 65, 68 degrees. So it, it should be fine. Now the bottom shelf is going to hold, house a sump. And I've only given myself 17 inches to play with here. That's, uh, that's not a lot. Oh, I take that back. 15 inches to play with here. And that's not a lot of room. But I'm not actually going to buy a tank to put here, I'm going to buy some kind of plastic box and make my own sump. And I don't think that I'll have too much trouble finding a, you know, a three foot, 15 inch box that I can put baffles in and make a sump out of. I think I'll, I think I'll be okay. If worse comes to worse and it looks like it's really going to be troublesome, I may pull this down, pull this down a little more. But I don't think so. I think I'll be fine with 15 inches. You know, little tanks are like 12 inches, so hi. All right, YouTube. I'm just trying to give you an update to uh, keep you in the loop here as to how this construction is going, what my plans are, and where I am. Good luck, YouTube.